All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make uh, pitch sticks. And uh, pitch is um, basically uh, primitive super glue. It's rendered down uh, pine sap from coniferous trees. Uh, you add a hardening agent to it, and then uh, you can use it like a hot glue gun uh, to haft uh, arrowheads and stone tools to um, handles and whatnot. And uh, for example, I have a, a hand spindle, a primitive hand spindle that I put together uh, one time, and uh, I needed to haft the uh, the weight here to the spindle here, and uh, I used some pine pitch to do that. So you basically heat up the, the tip and you apply it like you would similarly to a, a hot glue gun. Another example would be um, this here. You won't be able to see this. This is a little wand that I put together uh, for my daughter. And uh, I put a, um, a crystal in the, in the tip of it after boring out the, uh, the, the top uh, with, a, with a hand drill. Uh, the top of the stick here and then in that the top of the stick you can probably see a little bit sticking out there I applied pitch in there before I wrapped it with some buckskin um, just just as an embellishment and to also hide the pitch um, but that's just other ways many ways that you can use it uh, it's actually very good uh, the only thing about it is that it ends up being um, you have to watch uh, things that you are using pine pitch with around heat uh, high glue is water soluble <laughs> this is heat and fire soluble so uh, we're going to put uh, together a couple of um, pitch sticks all right we're going to start off and I'm going to show you what, what we're going to need um, this is uh, pine sap and a lot of times you don't have to do anything to the tree to get a hold to it um, a lot of times if there's a, a wound on the tree it'll be lying alongside the tree or underneath it and you can pick it up um, oftentimes you can scrape it off uh, with, a, with a knife or something into a pot or into a, a can like so and there will have there will be some pieces of this that will have um, some pieces of wood on here we'll, we'll discard these but you could keep the pieces of um, wood here that you won't use um, is fire extender and, and whatnot, so you don't totally have to get rid of this uh, in, a, in a camping or survival situation. Um, let's see here. So, uh, oftentimes you can get uh, pine uh, sap from which is the blood of the trees from your conif coniferous trees, like uh, you know your spruces, firs, cedars, gum trees, other pine trees. Um, and uh, yeah, this, this is so this is what it looks like. And I've been kind of saving, holding on to this uh, to wait to render it down. So I'm going to render it down today. Um, the next thing you're going to need is a, a hardening agent. Um, and this is some charcoal. Um, I'm not outside. I didn't make a campfire. Um, this is just some uh, commercial, commercially produced charcoal. Um, actually uh, from a dollar store in Japan. And you use it to, you know, freshen up your water and for rice cookers and uh, removing odors and for your bathtub and that, that sort of thing. But um, this saves me the hassle of having to make a campfire, you know, in my apartment or um, outside and have my neighbors um, looking at me all funny. Um, but you would be able to um, get charcoal, obviously, from a burnt down campfire. So we're going to need this as a hardening agent. Other hardening agents would be um, mollusk shells, eggshells. Um, and gourds crushed up as well um, and your hardening ag agents are what's going to going to make your uh, pitch when this is when you render down the sap into pitch you're going to it's going to make it uh, uh, more dense and not so glassy um, and brittle um, then different types of um, the hardening agents will have better have better uses charcoal is the most common and, and is usually the best um, not the greatest for waterproofing um, for like uh, birch bark canoes or birch bark um, ba uh, baskets that you need to be have waterproof. Uh, mollusk shells is good for uh, flexibility and uh, eggshell is uh, eggshell tends to be the best and what you'll need to do is you'll need to take your hardening agent and really crush and, and, and grind this down to uh, powdery uh, a consistency. So then next here I've got a bowl and a stick here to crush the charcoal into and with and powder it up and then I have this little little uh, portable camp cup um, and this is something that I'm willing to um, only use to render 
a pine pitch in because after you use it you're not going to be able to use it for much else and um, it's better to do it over open flame but you can do it on an electric stove uh, and actually I find it's probably a little safer a little bit more controlled heat um, but again if the pine gets anywhere onto your carpet or your clothing or your nice fur coat it's going to ruin it so that's just going to be a warning there always be careful around fire and, and your stove if you choose to do this indoors so we're going to get started rendering this down i'm going to take this uh <clears throat> i'm going to take these uh the charcoal and start powdering it up so this is what it's looking like here again it's just um bamboo that has been uh, made into charcoal and uh it's hollow and pretty brittle but I'm going to have to kind of, you have to kind of pound this to really crush it down really well. So I'm just going to kind of crack it like that. And I'm just going to spend some time smashing this down like so. Uh, having this on a rock or something like that and grinding it or a uh, mocajete or mortar pestle would probably be best But not one that you probably use for for uh, cooking or anything like that. So I'm um, go ahead and powder this up Okay, so um, I was able to smash these down I actually went outside and and went against a rock um, And got tried to get this as finely powdered as possible um it's pretty fine and this is really good um, so that's going to be the first step set that aside uh, next what we're going to do is we're going to take bits of our um, our pine pitch here and we're going to begin to melt them, them down so over here I'm going to turn my uh, eye on on the stove here to about medium high heat just to medium high now this is metal here uh, handle in I want to keep that off so I can at least uh, grab hold to it and away from me so I don't knock it over by mistake uh, if you got this on you molten hot it would not be a good thing so be careful so while this is heating up um, it's going to slowly melt down and then uh, we will uh, start to add uh, about a one-to-one -one ratio uh, to the uh, melted sap here This is starting to cook a little bit too fast, so I turned it down to like medium low heat. You don't want this to catch fire, and it is very flammable. And what you're doing is you're rendering away the turpentine that's naturally in the in the sap. So I'm taking an old chopstick or a twig and just um, twirling it around, keeping this moving, making sure the surface area is getting. Uh, getting touched so they can start to melt down but as you can see that's what the pine sap is starting to look like as it melts very sticky okay this is rendered down pretty pretty nicely and this is a big chunk of wood that was stuck to and uh, I want to make sure that that's what it is. Get all the, the uh, sappy goodness off of here. And then once we have that, I'm going to discard this the, the piece of wood here, but we're going to save it. Um, it's a good fire ext uh, extender. Uh, basically, it becomes fat wood. It's a piece of wood that's saturated with pine sap, which is highly flammable. So we can put that in a kit and a pots of this bag to kind of keep it for when we need something a little extra to get the fire started. So there's a piece here and I'm going to go ahead and use some two sticks or a pair of chopsticks to help me render or help me pick out some of these pieces here. I'll tap this here and I'm just going to set it aside. There's other pieces there. Set that aside. Just 
set this aside again all right so this is what we have here and roughly it's like a quarter of a cup and so roughly that's what I want to add uh, my hardening agent so I'm gonna add just a little bit at a time and keep this on low heat um, if this was a campfire or something um, we'd want to keep a very good eye on this and make sure that it does not flame up um, so you'd keep it off to the side of your fire and have coals. I may do another um, addendum to this video um, with some with the, the pine pitch that I have, the pine sap that I have left over and uh, do this outside um, so you can get the just. But I'll have to plan for that. All right, so I'm going to take a little bit of the charcoal here, the ground charcoal, finely powdered, and add a little bit at a time there. Just stir that up in there, mix that around. Um, other binders that can be added could be like cotton, feathers, cattail fluff down, cattail fluff um, in addition to your hardening agent. What happens when you don't add your hardening agent um, or other uh, <clears throat> uh, binding agents like uh, cattail down, for example, um, is that when the sap dries and become becomes pitch and it dries it uh, it becomes very glass like and extremely brittle and it, it's not a very good binding agent at that point because if you drop your tool or whatever you're making with it whatever you're trying to glue ends up uh, cracking so we're going to add just a little bit more and I think that should be about right And the rest of this I can put in a baggie somewhere and save it for later. All right. Yeah, that's about right. And again, you don't want to be using uh, your roommate or your significant other, your spouse or your mama's good pot pottery or uh, cooking tools for pot for this. Um, unless you want to ru ruin a relationship. So make sure you get something that's fully disposable. An old tin can will work just as well. Um, completely primitively, you could uh, fire your own pot, um, specifically for rendering uh, pitch, and use that. So I think we've pretty much got it. And that's really all it is to it. Now, and other additions you could add would be um, some some beeswax um, but I like to go with what is most common and what's readily available uh, and if you can get a fire going you will soon have charcoal uh, if you know your trees uh, you can you know you can harvest your your sap from your coniferous trees specifically in the the middle of summer when they really start um, uh, bleeding from wounds and cuts and things like that uh, is when you want to really start looking for that so what I want to do is really I want to remove this from the heat and as this hardens I'm going to take another stick here and I'm going to start to twirl this around and start forming my pitch stick. Alright so we've got this rendered down and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kind of tilt this to the side and I'll start dipping my uh, stick in which is a twig that I've got here a, a chopstick will work as well and then I want to just kind of twirl this around and let it air dry and then as this dries you can dip it in the cooling uh, pitch that you have now is no longer sap it's you can we can call it pitch now um, and start to form uh, and collect mass more like a, like a candle. So we're basically dipping you don't want to touch it yet um, it's going to be still very molten still very hot but it's going to cool and then as it cools you start adding more to it to build it up
okay at this stage it can be a little hot to the touch but not unbearable or it won't and rather it won't uh, cause any damage to you you start to form it around your stick still pretty warm that'll help build up more and then I'm trying to pick up more pitch as we go like that see like so and let's just start we'll just start to build this up like so Pretty hot. Kind of, kind of interesting though. Kind of interesting stuff. And then, as this starts to cool and harden, you can always reheat it at low heat. So here's the pitch stick that we have here. Um, it's kind of ugly looking and I want to shape it right. And if we were outside over an open fire, this would be a little bit easier. Uh, and again, you know, this is, I'm, I'm doing this in the house. I'm using an electric stove. All of this is dangerous. It's hot. Um, whether you're outside at a campfire or whether you're, you're in, 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 at home using modern conveniences. So if you choose to try this sort of stuff, make sure you be careful. Um, don't burn yourself, don't burn anybody else, don't burn your house down, be safe. So what I'm doing is I've got my uh, electric stove here, this eye on, on the highest level it can be. I can feel it's red hot and I just kind of want to start to twirl this around and melt this down. I don't want to melt it down so it drips onto the eye. I just want to melt this down so that I can start to shape it a little bit. And so I can take it off here and as you can see it's starting to sheen. And as long as it's not molten to the touch, I can start to kind of mold it. And I'm kind of rubbing it between my hands to shape and, and shape some of these edges down. All right, so here we go. Here's our um, pitch sticks. I made three of them from that, that glob of uh, pine sap. And uh, these are pretty dense. So when they sound like that, that's um, pretty good, not too brittle. So that's how you tell how well you've um, rendered it. If it gets too brittle, then just pick up the pieces, um, add them back to your pot, remelt them down, and just add a little bit more hardening agent and start over again.